I went to the gun show Saturday, uh, July the 27th. It was Kansas City's annual gun show for the Missouri Valley Arms Collectors Association. I've been to that show quite a few times. I really enjoy it. And it's a good mixture of uh, newer firearms along with military surplus firearms. And uh, last year I bought three rifles there. This time I, I bought two. I was on the hunt for uh, four different ones. Uh, these are the two that I came home with. And my thoughts on the show, it's as far as vendors, it looks like it's declining some. It looks like there were some more vacant tables and more vacant areas than I've seen in the past. Yet overall, the experience and the variety was still good. I was really surprised that I saw at least four of the Arasaka paratroopers for sale. And also, there were quite a few Garands. Uh, that was one of the firearms that I was looking for, but I didn't purchase one. Also, I was looking for the Springfield 1903. I already have an A3, so I was looking for the O3. And I th only really saw one. It was from Rock Island, and it was at the 22-2 number versus the 28 and above number, so I, I passed on that. Um, there was a LaBelle, and um, I was really happy with it. Um, so what I would like to do is give you a look at the, the two rifles that I bought. This one here is going to be the number five jungle carbine and this one is going to be the 3040 Craig uh, the model it's the 1898 this is a 1902 so here's the number five jungle carbine this is a BSA you can see there number five mark one we have the lightning cut there it has the M47C, which was the code number for the BSA. It's hard to make out my serial number there, though I don't think they match. The butt stock and the butt plate. And there's some stampings there. I'm not sure if those mean anything or just happen to be there. And I believe that's a different serial number than what's up here. And that does say the M47A. I do have a serial number on this, which doesn't match. Up to the sides and the flash hider. I'll turn this over, let you see the other side. And at the butt plate, you got the cut out there. The only thing here is on the bolt, it doesn't have the hollowed out bolt, though I don't necessarily think that's going to be incorrect in looking up things. Uh, they said that if they didn't have another bolt available, they did put in a mark, a number four bolt, though this is a 1946 dated. I got to double check on things, whether this would be the appropriate one anyway, or whether it's supposed to be the hollowed out one. And that has the lightning cut there. I did take off the upper hand guard and up here at the barrel knocks, they are uh, lightning cuts on that also. 
and also on the barrel it does say the M47C. Okay, so we're going to take a look at the other one that I bought, which would be the 3040 Craig. And we'll start here with the buttstock on that. I think the wood looks really nice on this one. And there's inspector's mark at the time. It's a 1902. Serial number, Springfield Armory, model 1898. Oh, sorry there. And let me slide this down. And the barrel condition on both of these doesn't look real bad. They're a little dark, but there is rifling and everything that I can see, and they should be good shooters. I'll flip this over, let you see the other side. There's the other side of it. And coming up here to the wrist on the bottom, we have the round roll, the cartouche there with the D. It has a marking on it there, a U. Slide this down. So my overall experience at the Missouri Valley Arms Collectors Association gun show, like I said, it's an annual show in July, and I've been really pleased with it. Uh, I feel, excuse me, uh, vendors are down some from what they had been in the past years. I also mentioned they had a variety of um, Arasaka paratroopers. Like I said, I saw four or five of them. I also saw uh, about the same amount of the Arasaka Type 44s. I have a Type 44. It's missing the bayonet. They uh, took it off and ground the bayonet lug down off of it. And these had the bayonets with them. Uh, that wasn't what I was looking for, though. If later I would like to come back and get one that actually has the bayonet versus mine that doesn't. The other thing that I noticed is I bought these from two different vendors and they were out of state vendors and I don't have a CNR license at the moment. I, I thought about it, but I've just never done that. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to need to do that because of um, the difference in the last several years for things that have happened with, with gun sales. The one table where I went back and acquired this one, they actually had a, a sign out saying, you know, you needed an FFL license or a CNR license, which I, I don't. Uh, and this was this was a good price on it. And I was, you know, like, oh darn, I wish I could really get this. Uh, I went to a different table farther into the show. Usually what I do is I, make my first rounds, I take notes of what I'm seeing and where they're at and the pricing on them, and then I go back and you know make my decision on what I wanna buy. And they did take uh, some off on each one of these when I purchased them. But this table, 
you know, it didn't have any signage up. And so I, and it actually didn't have a price tag on it. <clears throat> and so when I asked the gentleman about it, he had to find out and they told me what it was. And I asked them if they'd take less and, and they did. And then they asked me about me having a CNR license or something because they're out of state. And I'm like, no. And it's like, oh darn, you know, here it goes again. Uh, another vendor I can't purchase from. And um, they said they knew somebody at the show that could do a transfer for me. So when they called or something, they found out the guy wasn't there. He had was sick back week and so wasn't exhibiting. And so one of the helpers actually went up to the front desk or where they take the tickets management and ask the promoters, is there somebody you know, here that has the FFL that we can do the transfers for. So they found a, a gentleman that would do that. It was only a couple rows over, so we we did that. So I was able to acquire a number five jungle carbine. I, I was really happy for that. And so when I was doing doing it, I asked him if I come across another rifle that requires me to have the transfer, would you be able to do that for me? And he said yes. So the transfer fee for this one was was at thirty dollars. I went back to the one table where I saw this, and they had the spring. No, I'm sorry, not the spring but they had that Rock Island 1903. And again, I was really, really debating on going ahead and buying it, but I didn't. I picked this one up. And I went back and told the guy, he came over with me, they traded the paperwork, and he only charged me the $20 for a transfer fee on this one. So overall, um, I'm happy with my purchases. And I think going forward, if you're gonna go to the gun shows and purchase something, uh, especially in the military surplus, you should probably get your CNR license just so you don't have to try to find somebody that can do a transfer for you. There's another show coming up in November in Lawrence, Kansas, which I is about, I think for me, about 45 minutes away. And I've never been to that one, and it's a smaller one. And I think I'm gonna go to that one in November. So again, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, look forward to me doing the videos of me shooting these and talking more about them and giving you a more in-depth look on them. So again, thank you very much. I appreciate any comments that you have or insights.